Waggett uh, with MSW Interactive Designs. I'm the owner of MSW Interactive Designs, which is a uh, digital agency um, focusing on website design and um, comprehensive marketing solutions. So <clears throat> I'm actually really excited about this Facebook Live this month because AI has kind of been all the talk. And, you know, we've had clients asking about it. And I know that you're interested in how you can best use it for your own business. And I'll tell you, I mean, this technology is changing so fast. You know, normally when we talk about technology shifts, we talk in, you know, at least months, if not years. But I mean, literally with AI, we're talking in days and weeks. That's how fast it's going. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to share my screen really quick. Okay, I'm going to start by walking you through just a quick um, presentation. So I <clears throat> am actually using uh, AI for this presentation. And so the first thing that I did is I went to ChatGPT and I asked it, what is the definition of artificial intelligence? And this is what it gave me. So computer generated content or programming that uses stuff that already exists essentially. And then it's trained to analyze and formulate answers to our questions and then provide a synthesized response directly to the user. And if you think about it, I mean, this is going to impact the way that search works in a big way. Because when we go to Google and we're looking for answers to questions, because that is the reason, right, that we go to Google and we, and we search for things, Google comes back with a list of stuff that then we have to do the research and synthesize and create um, the answers independently. But now AI does that for us. So as I'm thinking about this, I actually see AI as a revolution in how we work and conduct business because it has the power to change the way we do everything. And, you know, in reality, if we create, equate, oh my gosh, equate this to like the invention of television, cars, right? The way we get around airplanes and more recently, the personal computer, the internet and the smartphone. These were all things that revolutionized how we work. So I just want to show you this. This cracked me up a little bit. So I had a conversation this morning with ChatGPT. So here's how it started. And I'm, I'm going to kind of read and scan this at a high level um, in case you're watching this on your phone and you can't actually read it yourself. So I started with a prompt. What are the most impactful technology inventions that have changed the way the world works over the past 100 years? So chat GPT came back and it said, there's been many, here's some significant ones, personal computer, internet, smartphones, television, airplane, nuclear energy, space exploration, medical technology, renewable energy. So it gave me nine. And then I said, are you an impactful technology that will change the way the world works? So ChatGPT came back and said, as an AI language model, I'm designed to assist and augment human intelligence. While I'm capable of processing and generating a lot of data, I'm ultimately a product of human innovation and creativity, and I exist to serve as a tool to help humans communicate, blah, blah, blah. Whether or not I will have significant impact on the world in the future remains to be seen, but I will continue to evolve. I said, well, okay, well, why are you so humble? So first of all, the takeaway here, I mean, I'm going to get to um, where I actually got it to agree with me, but I want you to be aware when you're interacting with these technologies that you can actually converse and you should, and you can challenge it and ask it deeper questions. So I said, why are you so humble? Don't you think you have the ability to change the way the world works? And so it comes back and it says, as an AI language model, I don't possess emotions or feelings, and I'm programmed to remain objective and neutral. While I have the ability to process vast amounts of data, blah, 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 I'm still a machine. It's up to humans to decide. I exist to augment human intelligence. So basically, it gave me the same answer back. So then I came back and I challenged it. And I said, 
but you included computers and smartphones in your list. They were designed by humans. How are you different in your ability to impact the way the world works? So it comes back and it says, you are correct. Computers and smartphones were designed and created by humans, just as I designed. I was designed and created by human programmers. However, I am different in that I am an AI language model built on more advanced and sophisticated technology than the computers and smartphones of the past. I am capable of processing and generating natural language responses to complex queries, and my capabilities continue to improve as my training data and algorithms evolve. That being said, while I have the ability to assist with various tasks, make information more accessible, and augment human intelligence, my ultimate impact will depend on how humans choose to use me, blah, blah, blah. So I challenged it again. You included the internet in your list too. It was built on advanced and sophisticated technology. Humans direct how the internet is used also. With this logic, why would you not include yourself in the list? So ChatGPT comes back and it says, you make a valid point. As an AI language model, I'm built on advanced and sophisticated technology and my capabilities continue to evolve. Like the internet, my impact on the world will depend on how humans choose to use me. While it's ultimately up to humans to determine how best to use AI, I believe it has the potential to make a significant impact on the world. So basically, ChatGPT completely changed its mind. <laughs> this is amazing. AI can be used to automate routine tasks, improve decision-making, and develop new solutions to complex problems. As it evolves, it may play an increasingly important role in shaping the future of various fields, such as medicine, transportation, and energy. So like, it's really going into detail now. So to answer your question, I could be included in the list of impactful inventions that have changed the way the world works. However, the extent will depend on how humans use me. So I said, okay, well then can you recreate the list and now include yourself? So it does. Certainly here's an updated list of impactful technology inventions that have changed the way the world works, including AI language models like me. And so it puts them all in and then it adds itself at the end. AI technology, including language models like me, has the potential to blah, 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 making it impactful technology invention that has already started changing the way the world works. Is that not insane? Anyway, I just thought I would share that with you because I want you to realize that, you know, a couple of things, you don't just take it face value what it comes back with. Learn how to challenge it. That's what makes your prompts better as well. And we'll talk about prompts because prompts, it's like garbage in, garbage out. What you put in, if you put in kind of garbage, abstract, really general stuff, you're going to get back um, general stuff. All right. So some mind-blowing things that AI can already do for business. It can write excellent and detailed content based on user requests, prompts, and feedbacks. It can create original graphics based on input prompts and feedback. It can replicate your voice. Now, let me just show you this. I'm gonna switch back over to my browser. And this was just a quick um, replication it did of my voice. And why would you wanna do this? Well, if you wanna build training videos or marketing videos and use your voice, but you don't wanna take the time to record it, you can just put in the text, your voice is replicated, and then it can actually read it. Now. This is just, um, it had me read a little 10 second paragraph um, and then it created this voice replication. So this, what it's, what I'm going to have it read is not the paragraph it had me read. It had me read something else entirely. And now it's taking what it did with my voice and now it's applying it to this little script I wrote about our Facebook live today. So let, let's listen. Oh, I just shifted my, I'm sorry, just shifted my volume. <laughs> Let's try that again. Well, this is the thing about going live. Apparently my system resources um, are getting limited because I have so many tabs open for this presentation, but you get the gist of it, right? It took my voice. I did not read these words out loud. It took my voice and now it has created this voice where it can basically read what 
script I've provided. And then I can download that, bring it into something I'm going to put on YouTube and then go from there. It's pretty powerful technology. All right. It can also replicate your avatar. So there's a new service out there and I'm actually going through the process and I'll show it on a future training. They haven't finished it yet where I had to get on video and talk about my company, MSW Interactive Designs, my business coaching and business training company as well. And so it's actually going to create uh, a avatar of me uh, with my voice um, and then make it think like me based on the inputs I gave it about my company. So we'll see how that turns out, but the technology exists. It can write formulas for any calculation. So if you're big into Google Sheets or Excel and you need a formula for something, it can absolutely do that for you. It can analyze inputs and provide feedback and recommendations. So we're going to look at some of that stuff in just a second. It can create original music based on prompts and feedback. So I don't know how um, in tune you are with what's going on out there in the AI, AI world, but there was a guy who had one of the tools actually write the new Beatles song. So it, it actually wrote a new song, um, gave output the chords and everything that go with the song and the lyrics in the style that the Beatles would have done. It can create video based on user requests, prompts, and feedback. So yes, it can actually generate video based on something you tell it that you want to see. Um, so now I want to just give you a heads up. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to close with showing you some things that I did for those of you who actually registered for the live training. So there's several of you who filled out my form and told me what your business was, and I did some things for you. So make sure you stay on. Um, okay, really quick. I'm going to show you a few things that I'm actually using it for at MSW Interactive Designs and in my business coaching company as well. So we use it for brainstorming for presentations. So just for this presentation, I actually had it create an outline for me and uh, research examples. I had it help me write some scripts for promoting um, the training and then creating worksheets for note takers. So you can do this and have it ideate with you and come up with some really creative stuff. I use it for note taking. So there's a tool out there called Otter, which is AI, and it sits in on your Zoom meetings. And so it captures and takes all the notes and then it can pull out the important notes. It can pull out the to-do items, the things that people were tasked with and summarize the meeting. Use it for transcribing videos. So you can create full transcripts of any video. You can create summaries. So if it's a long video, you can create a summary and it'll go through and analyze what the important part points are, and then spit those out to you. And if you're into YouTube and YouTube marketing, there's tools out there, AI now that will go in and actually analyze your video and create the chapters, the chapter markers in the video for you. I actually used AI to help formulate questions for a recent um, set of employee reviews that I did. I sent the questions to my team members in advance. They replied back. I brought their answers into AI technology and it gave me uh, kind of a, a summary or a pulse on what each individual person was feeling. So it analyzed their responses and then summarized some actions that I should take to better support those employees. How cool is that, right? And I did that in chat GPT, by the way, um, improving. I actually used it to improve um, some sales copy that we use for emails. Uh, it can improve website copy. Um, and then it can also improve contract language. So if you have contracts, you can actually take your contract verbiage, put it into these AI tools. And I'll show you a specific one for legal in a second, but you can even take it into chat GPT, have it look at your contract and recommend improvements. And then you can use it for creating. So I actually created several checklists for clients. Like when we launch a website, uh, I want to give a checklist to a client on when they go test, make sure everything's good with the website. And so it helped me actually build that checklist. And you can create marketing plans. You can create service plans. So all these things you can do. Uh, and then here's a few more things. So I have used it to create um, coaching questions for my coaching business that are like very um, probing and thoughtful. Um, in fact, I will just show you really quick. Let me switch over. 
So I have, I run a mastermind group at the lake called LX council. And I was looking for some probing questions for CEOs um, that we can use as discussion. So I said, pretend you moderate a mastermind of high performing CEOs. You want to ask them five thought provoking strategic questions to answer about their business. What are your ideas? So in my prompt, I gave it kind of the context. I gave it the audience and I told them what I wanted to get. So it said here, absolutely. What's your company's purpose beyond generating profit and how does it align with your long-term strategy? And then the purpose of this question is, how do you stay ahead of industry disruption and ensure your company's relevance in the future? And then it explained why it gave me that question. What is your company's approach to talent acquisition and retention and how does it contribute to your overall success? Answered that question. How do you balance short-term gains with long-term growth and sustainability? Answered that question and told me why it asked it. And then how do you measure success beyond financial performance and what metrics do you use? And then gave me uh, why it asked that question. Then I asked it for five more. So I gave it feedback in my prompt. I said, those are pretty good. So I like what you've done, continue doing it. Can you give me five more? So it did. What's your company's approach to risk management and how does it inform your decision-making process? How do you balance needs of your customers with the needs of shareholders? So that would be for a bigger company. So you get the idea. So you can use the tool to help you in your business. You can research industry best practices uh, in your industry, in other industries, analyzing um, existing processes in your company and having it help determine weak points. Um, you can help it uh, ideate new internal systems and processes, which we're actually doing as a company right now. And you can create process documents around those, um, those processes that you implement. You can use it to brainstorm hiring and retention ideas for your business. You can write better job descriptions and evaluation criteria. You can streamline internal repetitive processes, including like writing graphics, SEO stuff, and video. You can replicate voices for use in video, which I showed you. You can actually create mind maps, which is crazy to me. And you can summarize contracts and agreements. And really that's just the start. Those are just some things to kind of get you thinking about the power that you can use this technology for in your business. So, you know, with any new technology, there's always going to be issues. And so I wanted to kind of address some of the problems associated with AI right now. And again, as rapidly as this is changing, many of these are just going to be outdated faster than we can blink an eye. But essentially, you know, right now it's all about change, right? Humans are naturally resistant to change. And, um, you know, when fear is involved, people sort of back away or delay in implementing. As a business owner, when a technology like this comes around, you cannot delay in implementing the technology. Think back to the personal computer, okay? So that revolutionized business, but there were very late adopters, right? Because they thought computers were going to take over the world. Well, I mean, they kind of have in a way. <laughs> I digress. Um so being a business owner and being an early adopter on highly impactful technologies is critically important. Making yourself educated and aware. The thing that people are out there talking about who have not done research, have not actually experimented with the tools personally to understand their limitations, their strengths, and all the things that they can do, they make assumptions and draw conclusions, right? Um, the thing is, is that the technology is evolving so fast. The conclusions that you drew three weeks ago may not be true today. In fact, I'll give you one. So one of the limitations of chat GPT, which was a problem a couple of weeks ago, is that it was limited to data uh, up to 2021. Well, guess what? Chat GPT-4 now connects to the internet. There's no more limitation on the data. So people who are telling you that chat GPT doesn't interact with the internet that's no longer true. That's how fast it's changing. So just be aware that what was true last week might not be true this week. People don't effectively know how to use um, the prompts to generate quality results for their business. So we're gonna talk about prompts in just a little bit. 
And of course it's not perfect, right? Um, I showed you arguing with it, <laughs> but um, I'll tell you another example. I actually went in and I asked um, ChatGPT to um, tell me about MSW Interactive Designs, my company. And I was in ChatGPT 3.5, which was not connected to the internet. And so um, ChatGPT came back with these names of people who own the company that I had never heard of. So I'm like, I challenged it. And I'm like, I don't know who these people are, but they never owned MSW Interactive Designs. So ChatGPT came back and said, oh, I'm sorry. You know, let me do some more research essentially. And it came back and it gave me more names of people who never owned my company or were involved with my company. So you need to be aware that the information that it brings back still requires your brain, your mind, um, and your ability to challenge the accuracy of the results. Okay. Um, and of course, it's going to change the face of multiple professions. I mean, that's a problem. Um, notice I didn't say replace. It's just going to change the face of them. So humans aren't going away. Humans are just going to be shifting their role and then utilizing and leveraging the technology. That's all. And then, of course, there's the doomsdayers, Hal <laughs> from Space Odyssey. I mean, it's completely possible, honestly. And that's why people like Elon Musk and some of these other scientists are saying put a six month, you know, ban on the development of AI. Problem with that is if there's a ban on it, guess who's still going to be developing AI? And that's the bad guys in other countries. So um, anyway, I digress again. Let's move on. All right. So let's just look really quickly because I know you jumped on this um, for ways to use it in your business and hopefully, you know, me leading with that and giving you some ideas gets that, you know, those creative juices flowing around your own company, but it also is going to impact so many other industries. And you really should be aware because these industries do affect our lives, right? As consumers. So in the manufacturing space with, uh, oops, sorry about that. In the manufacturing space with um, <clears throat> um, robotics, all the stuff, right? Transportation, autonomous vehicles, um, drones, um, all the stuff. Healthcare. Uh, I don't know if you saw, there was a story actually about a um, person whose dog was saved through a diagnosis um, using AI. The vets couldn't figure it out. And the owner went to AI and did some probing, 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 all the symptoms kept, you know, iterating with AI. It came back with a diagnosis and the recommendation to go see a specialist. Turns out the owner did it. AI was right and the dog was cured. So it really does have the ability to change our lives. It has the ability to affect finance with technologies that already exist, retail, customer service. I'm going to show you a tool for um, a really super powerful chatbot and um, course agriculture, human resources, for sure. Uh, legal, there's huge things coming in the legal space with open AI and marketing and advertising, of course, uh, my space. No doubt it's going to have huge impact. Here's the thing is that we need to understand that the technology is not going to replace humans, okay? Humans are still needed, but what humans have to do is augment their capability and upscale to the technology. So when we talk about upscaling, that means learning as quickly as we can about how to leverage and properly use the technology as it evolves. My advice uh, as a business owner, so business owner to business owner, is that you really dive in and start working to embrace the technology in your business. Because if you know the technology and can leverage the technology better and faster than your competition, then you will far exceed their capabilities faster, quicker, and outperform them. Okay, so let's get into some nitty gritty stuff and that's strategies for prompts. So when we're talking to AI, interacting with it and telling it what we want, what we need, there's some things to keep in mind as you're doing it, because the better the information you give it, the more quality results and useful results you're going to get in return. So you want to make sure that you are using open-ended prompts 
and you want to speak in a natural and conversational tone. Okay. And you want to be specific. You want to provide context in everything. So the more information you give AI in your prompts, the better the results are going to be. And then multi-turn conversations is back and forth. So I showed you that at the beginning, I went back and forth with chat GPT on their list of nine um, technologies that have the power to, you know, essentially change the way we work. You go back and forth and iterate and have the conversation and that will help you get better results. You want to use personalization. So be as specific as you can. And you also can use humor and you can ask chat GPT to use humor too. Like when you are asking it, if you, if you put a prompt in and then you say, um, write this in a humorous tone, write this in a professional tone, write this in a quirky tone, write this from a feminine perspective, the language that it comes back with in each one of those cues is going to change substantially. So it'll take the same information and rephrase it. So I would challenge you to go experiment with that a little bit because the results are pretty friggin' incredible. You wanna use knowledge-based prompts. So you wanna be super specific again. Oops, sorry about that. Using emotional prompts. So you can tell it to come from a voice of empathy. You can tell it to write in a more exciting tone. So ask it from an emotional perspective, even though it can't, you know, you saw in my example, it doesn't want to do emotion or feel emotion. It can write in those tones and then use role-playing prompts. So you want to um, tell ChatGPT that it is the expert. So let's just say, um, I know Kelly is on this live. So let's just say um, you're going to try to write some materials around your business, Kelly. And so you would say, um, put yourself in the role of a professional, very experienced nutritionist. And from that role, develop this for me. So you give it the context. And then another cue that you um, should consider using at the end of your prompts is, do you understand? And it'll come back and say, yes, I understand. And it will give you, it will repeat back um, in its own language, what you asked it to do. And you can say, yes, you've got it now go. Okay, so that's some cues for prompts and I'm gonna show you in just a second, um, some examples that I did for you guys in chat GPT. But I want you to know that these are some lesser known AI tools. I just want you to know these are out there. They are on my uh, landing page for this live. So if you go to puttheweb2work.com, it'll ask you to register, put your name and email in, and it will take you to a page that I created that has not just these tools, but several others that I use regularly. So let me just run through these really quick. So there's one called Tome. It actually builds presentations for you. So like your PowerPoint presentation kind of thing. So if, if you're put on the spot and you need to build a presentation, you can give it all the prompts and it will build the presentation and you can edit the presentation from there. So it gives you a great first draft to work from. Wingman, this one can really impact your sales process. So Wingman actually listens in on real calls with clients and prospects and gives you cues and prompts during the call to help engage and close people in the sale. Superhuman takes control of your email in a huge way. It's insane. Zendesk, that's been around for a while, but the power they've implemented um, a lot more AI into it so that you can build customer support, integrate it with your website and really lessen the phone calls, the support phone calls that you get for your company. VidIQ does titles and thumbnails for video. So if you're big on YouTube, VidIQ can handle this for you and it will make those thumbnails that will actually generate, you know, people clicking through the video and watching the video. Quillbot, it rewrites and rephrases things. So people um, who are in the AI space now, um, they kind of see it as a way around AI detection. I feel like the use of that is going to go away pretty fast because all of these companies are integrating AI. So it's going to become less of a, you know, AI is cheating and instead 
um, because it's integrated, it's going to be integrated in Word, it's going to be integrated in Google Docs, Excel, PowerPoint, all these tools. If it's integrated, there's no way or no reason to go and have to detect AI because you know in all the tools that we use on a daily basis, AI is already there. But Coolbot does rewrite and rephrase content. So let's just say you wrote a blog five years ago. You can take that blog and take it into Quillbot. Um, and if it's an evergreen topic, um, it can basically rewrite it for you. So it produces new content, um, but it's just not the same language, okay? Same concepts, because it's evergreen. You know, the mechanisms didn't change. The recommendations didn't change, but you want to reuse and repurpose the content. So Quillbot's really good for that. Clean voice removes background noise from um, podcasts. So if you're getting into the podcast space and you and you have that airy, you know, background noise when you don't have the super high end equipment, it will remove all that background noise and make it sound like you're actually in a studio. Um, Beethoven creates original music. Copy Monkey creates Amazon listings. So if you are in the Amazon space and doing retail stuff like that, uh, Copy Monkey will do that for you. Video can take and create short videos for you automatically from any long form content that you've created. So this is this training right now is being recorded. This is long form content. This could be 45 minutes to an hour long. So I can now take this into video and it will analyze the whole entire video and it'll take clips and create short form content that I can start using on social media. And then Crisp is another one. It removes background noise from recorded calls. So these are all on the list at putthewebtowork.com. So just go fill that out. And then just at a super high level, I want you to know that um, all of these categories already have AI tools in the space that you can use. Many of them are free. So um, I urge you to go explore and then be aware um, this, this uh, thing at the bottom where I have Descript, Harvey, Mem, and uh, Speak. These are actually tools that OpenAI, which is the company that developed ChatGPT, have invested in. These are companies that are using um, chat GPT and open AI technology in their applications. And so open AI has an invested in these companies. So Descript makes video editing as simple as editing a text document. Harvey builds workflows for lawyers to make everything from research to communication more efficient. And then MEM self-organizes notes and predicts which information will be needed to the user. Sign me up for that immediately. And then um, speak as an AI tutor that teaches languages. So, all right. Let's, um, that's my last slide. So I'm done with the slides. I want to jump into a couple things that I did um, for you guys. Uh, so really quick before I do that, be aware there's chat GPT, right? This is what everybody, you know, hears and talks about. Google has launched um, Bard. So you just go to bard.google.com. That's Google's version of OpenAI. And then um, Microsoft has its AI so if you go to Bing, go to bing.com and then up here with this background, it's kind of hard to read, but you click on chat and then you can get to Bing's AI and um, it, you work it just like you do chat GPT. So I want you to know that those are out there and you can go start playing with all of them. So let's just look at a couple of things that I did for um, you guys on this call. Um, okay. Supplement company sales email. So Kelly, this is for you. I, I was very generic, but, um, we've, we've trained, um, our chat chat GPT, cause we've been using it for um, a few months. So ours is going to be better than most if you're starting from scratch. So you want to experiment with your prompts and make it more detailed. But so I put in here, I own a supplement company, write a cold sales email. So it gave me a subject, unlock your full potential with your, company name, exclusive offer inside. So pretty good subject. And then hello, hope this email finds you well, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm reaching out on behalf of this company as a fitness enthusiast and health conscious individual. I know how important it is to find the right supplements. Uh, we believe in providing only the highest quality as a token of appreciation for taking the time to read the email. Here's a discount. Here's a quick glimpse at our products. So it's predicting what kind of products you have, Kelly. You just have to go put your product name in. Um, why choose us? It's giving the reasons why 
And are you ready to take the first step toward unlocking your first potential? So there's a call to action and then all of your contact information. So this is a cold sales email outreach. You can have ChatGPT or other AI tools write something like this for your business and maybe write a few different versions and test them out and see what ones generate a reply. Um, all right, let's see here. Let me find another one. Um, okay, I know Kristen's on this call. So Kristen, uh, A to Z home services. So I said, all right, I own a fire water mold restoration company. As an expert in this field, knowing that when customers call me, they are usually in a highly emotional state due to a fire, water, or mold issue. Develop a customer journey and experience outline for my business. The goal is to ensure the customer feels cared for from the first call to the completion of the job and beyond. So notice the depth and detail in my prompt, right? So it comes back and in under a minute, it gave me a customer journey and experience outline for your company that you could take and implement. So awareness, here's what to do from the first contact. And then the initial assessment and emergency response, here's what to do. And again, this is a customer care plan, essentially. Number three, the detailed inspection and plan development, here's what to do. During the restoration process, here's what to do. Project completion and follow-up, here's what to do. And then ongoing support and relationship building, here's what to do. I mean, this is incredible for a business owner. If you could take this process and implement all of these things based on these recommendations, imagine the powerful impact it would have on the experience with your customers. I mean, it's, it's just so amazing. And then of course you could do stupid fun stuff with it too. So I did this the other night while I was having dinner with a couple friends. So my friends, John and Kathy, um, I said, well, I'm just going to have it write a love song for you. And I said, I need to write a love song. This song is from John. John is very wealthy. He's a muscular and handsome man. He's very confident and very successful. He's age 60 ish. Kathy is a beautiful, strong woman. Who's a successful realtor. She's independent, brilliant, and loves to laugh. Can you write something that will make her swoon over John? And so GPT wrote this poem for Kathy and it is hysterical. It is so funny, but I mean, so you can have fun with this technology as well. All right. I want to jump to, um, let's see, real estate auction marketing. I had someone sign up this morning for this. So I wanted to show you this because let me go to Chrome, not that one, this one. Okay. So I talked about the difference between um, open AI, chat GPT and search, right? So I did a search in Google. I said, marketing for real estate auctioner auctioneers in Missouri, what's the best approach? So here's the traditional Google results, right? Uh, how do I market for auction? And then there's all this other information that I need to go click through these websites, see what they have, synthesize the information and sort of come up with my plan. <clears throat> Whereas with OpenAI, I said, Mar same prompt, marketing for real estate auctioneers in Missouri, what's the best approach? So OpenAI gave me this whole entire plan for marketing for real estate auctioneers, develop a strong brand identity with some detail, build a user-friendly website, leverage social media, utilize email marketing, network with local professionals, offer free educational content, collaborate with local media, utilize online advertising, participate in local events, monitor and adjust your strategy. So <laughs> it, it actually answered my question, what's the best approach? And gave me some ideas. So you can see the difference between using um, AI for, or using AI for um, search versus using Google for search. All right, a couple other quick things. Um, Copy AI is another um, version. It's kind. It's just like Chat GPT, and I've got a link for that in um, the uh, landing page that I told you about. Uh, I already showed you Bard for Google. Um, 
there is a Chrome extension for ChatGPT. So just go to the Chrome web store and search for AI. You can see I did that over here. And um, there's Quillbot and there's um, ChatGPT. So essentially what you can do when you go to uh, Google um, up here, I installed it in mine. So here's the little icon up here in the upper right. Click on it and ChatGPT opens right next to me. Now notice that by default, um, ChatGPT still goes to 3.5, which does not connect to the internet, by the way. ChatGPT4 is the one that does. And um, ChatGPT4 Chat GPT right now is the one you have to pay for. It's like 20 bucks a month. Um, so I could take this prompt from Google and I could take the same one. And this is actually how I generated what I just showed you over in ChatGPT. And click on submit. So you can actually look at web results and chat GPT results uh, side by side, which is pretty cool. All right, um, I'm gonna show you a few other tools. Let me come to that one last. Uh, here's legal robot. So know what you sign, automated legal analysis for everyone. So a lot of these new tools that just came out have wait lists. So what you do is you just get on the wait list and then you get notified when it's live. There's chat fuel, which is a um, AI, powered chatbot that you can put on your website to automate customer support and um, sales. There is um, Descript.com, which is a way for you to do video and um, podcasting, actually. So there's so much stuff, video editing, screen recording, clip creation, another one that does AI voices, it transcribes. So Descript is a really good one. Go check that one out. Wingman, I talked about um, really briefly. This is the one that will help you with your sales in real time on the phone, which is blows my mind. Tome is the one that will build presentations for you. VidIQ will um, help you grow your YouTube channel and give you very specific recommendations based on analysis on how you can improve and grow your YouTube channel. Superhuman is the email one. Uh, later, later.com is an AI powered Instagram hashtag tool. So if you're doing social media posts and you wanna get um, trending hashtags around a specific industry, later will do all of that for you. And then Murph.ai is one that is AI powered and will um, clone your voice <laughs> as well as several other things. So you can see here um, all the things that you can do, voice cloning, voice over video, voice over Google Slides, voice changer, and text to speech. All right. So let me, I'm going to just stop sharing my screen and wrap this up. So here's the takeaways, guys. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you. The thing is, is that AI number one is here to stay. Um, it's not going anywhere and it's definitely gonna revolutionize the way we work. Hopefully you can see that, but if you are still skeptical, the proof is in the fact that AI is right now being integrated into all Microsoft applications. AI is right now being integrated into all Adobe applications. So we're talking video editing, the recording studio, uh, Photoshop, Illustrator. AI is being integrated right now into all those tools. It's also being integrated into CRMs. So like uh, as an agency, we use HubSpot. They've already integrated AI so that we don't manually have to go do data entry for new clients. We can actually talk in our microphones and say, um, add this new client, give it the client name, the address, the phone number, it pops it in and um, takes care of all that for you. So the thing is, and you need to be aware that lightning speed, right? AI, all the tools are coming out so flipping fast. So we're gonna be talking about this more often as an agency and trying to help educate our clients. So my call to action for you today is go play. Go to putthewebtowork.com, put your email in, it'll redirect you. I have a landing page with a ton of AI tools that are specifically good for business. Ones that I have utilized myself, 
um, tried myself. So you don't have, have to waste a lot of time guessing if it's something that will work. The ones that I put on that page work and they're fantastic. So um, that's it guys. My hour is about up. So I am going to let you go. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hopefully I generated some energy for you around the potential that AI has to help you streamline your business, improve your efficiency, and really rock your bottom line. See you next time. Bye.